Hello, I'm Charlene Erickson and I'm going to talk a little bit about my book Battle Scars and if you were looking at um, having a read you'd have a little bit of an idea of what to expect. So the first chapter is the introduction and it talks about my um, a brief description of um, my battle with ovarian cancer and why I've decided to start sharing my story to others. Verbal diarrhea, this is included for a bit of a fun, not everything should be taken seriously and um, even going through cancer, you know, you, you still got to be um, a little bit light-hearted and not take things too seriously. Uh, this chapter talks about some of the comments that would be um, made to me whilst going through my cancer um, journey and um, some of these comments used to just make me laugh my head off. So um, I thought it'd be fun to um, include something uh, humorous in my book. The power of positive thinking, this is very important because the alternative is not good. Uh, to be able to get through such a tough time, you need to be in a really good frame of mind and surround yourself with positive affirmations to um, be able to get you through. The warning signs, this chapter is about the warning signs that I had and um, it's a really important chapter actually because uh, about 90% of ovarian cancer patients um, had the exact same um, signs and symptoms, almost textbook um, style. So um, it is really good to um, read on, read a little bit about that. Following your instincts, this chapter talks about um, how important it is to follow your instincts. I myself for nearly 12 months had something in the back of my head saying, gee Charlene, something's not quite right here and maybe you should get checked out. Um, I did go to the doctor a few times and um, complain about a swollen abdomen, um, pains and strains and you know, and I pretty much got fobbed off and I'd go home thinking, oh, maybe I am being a bit silly and maybe this is something that is normal and um, the, I think really um, I should have listened to myself a bit more um, initially and pushed a bit harder at the doctor about what my body was telling me and it was saying, yeah, Charlene, something is wrong. The diagnosis, this is going to be a hard chapter for people that know me to read. Um, it's very confronting, it talks about how I was diagnosed and what followed after the diagnosis is really a scary time and um, I think we all can imagine what it's like to um, be told that you have cancer but when you go through it yourself it's, um, you know, it, it's really tough and it's hard to explain to others what, you know, what you're feeling because the emotions are mixed. Um, I talk about limbo. This chapter is um, what it feels like to be in limbo after diagnosis, um, not knowing if anyone can help you or waiting for you know what sort of stage cancer that you have and what treatment plan um, they've got. Um, well, they're, they're working on for me. I had no idea. Um, leaving your um, your life in somebody else's hands and not having the control is really tough. I've written a chapter on advice. This is an interesting one. Uh, lots of people like to offer their advice and I do appreciate any advice people give me. It's just very hard when you have about a hundred different people coming at you with um, conflicting bits of advice. Somebody would say, you know, go down the naturopath road and drink carrot juice every day because I hear it cures cancer and other people talk about you know chemotherapy it's really hard on your body and sometimes that could kill you more than the actual cancer itself you know so it was pretty really tough to um, take on board all the bits of advice offered to you by professionals and, and friends and family and um, I understand that you know they offering you advice because they truly care for your life and um, they feel the need to you know pass on what they think works or what they hear works um, for somebody else. Hope Restored, I, um, I really enjoy this chapter, this is my favourite chapter. This is a lot about my um, guy oncologist and um, he's the very first person to sit me down and say, look Charlene, it's alright, don't panic, we're, we're going to sort you out and um, we'll try and do it as fast as possible. And um, he had uh, 30 years experience in guiding oncology and um, 
I, I said to him that the doctors initially said to me that there you know, probably isn't really much um, hope in having an operation or chemotherapy because it looks like a big mess in there. But um, he sat me down and he said, look, Charlene, don't worry, we're going to get to the bottom of it and um, we'll sort you out. So uh, it made me feel feel really good that um, you know somebody was going to give, give it a shot. All systems go, this chapter talks about... Um, our life being turned upside down, really. Uh, pulling the kids out of daycare, um, resigning from work, and um, my husband having to, you know, put his notice in for leave too because we were heading off to another state to uh, go and get sorted out. We didn't know how long we were going to be gone for or if we were even going to come back. So um, that, that was pretty tough. Uh, chapter is on surgery, ICU, and recovery. This is going to be another really hard chapter for those that know me to read. It talks about the surgery. Um, I had no, no idea what to expect. I thought I was going down to Brisbane to get a few tumours taken out and then I'd recover and I'd be fine. But um, there was a lot more um, intense than I expected. Uh, the surgery was um, supposed to go for two hours and it ended up turning into seven hours because there was a lot more um, complicated than they thought. So. Um, you know, it would have been really scary for my husband too, sitting um, back at home at my cousin's house in Brisbane and after the two hour mark, phoning to see, you know, what's going on. You know, it's been two hours now and then it got to three, four, five, six, seven. So that poor guy just would have been, um, yeah, pretty stressed out. And recovery was uh, pretty intense too. You know, um, I had to learn how to walk again, how to uh, eat again, and um, even had to br do breathing exercises every day. It was um, it was a very intense. Post surgery, I talk about you know a bit more recovery and um, coming back to Darwin and uh, waiting to heal before I start for chemotherapy. And that's the next chapter, chemotherapy. It's a uh, exactly what everybody says plus more um, it was a tough experience I went in um, feeling really confident and you know the first treatment I was like oh Jesus is all right okay yeah no this is nothing you know I've got this and then had, after having to have weekly treatment every week that went on by you know it got worse and worse and worse and more um, you know complications would arise as I went on through and um, just becoming really weak and um, not even being able to pick up a load of um, washing and hang it on the line. You know, that was just impossible for me. You know, I can't even begin to explain how that feels um, to a normal, able person because it's just, um, yeah, it's just crazy. I talk about having a hysterectomy, menopause and sex after menopause and cancer. This is an interesting um, subject. Um, I didn't realise I had to have a hysterectomy at first and I um, didn't quite understand that having a hysterectomy would be um, bring on uh, menopause and menopause, you know, I had like, you know, 20 years before I even had to worry about that so I didn't really know what um, was what to expect after that and I did begin to wonder how that was going to affect my sex life of course. Um, I am married and um, I was, uh, you know, basically had no idea about um, you know some of the things that was about to happen to my body but as it turns out I'm actually pretty good so um, all those worries I had uh, were for nothing you know everything's still fine and you can live a reasonably normal life you might get a few hot flushes and a little bit of memory loss but you know you get that from having children so it's all good I have a whole chapter on having an ileostomy. So for those of you that don't know what an ileostomy is, it's um, when they attach a, um, a bag to your stomach to be able to collect your feces because my bowel had to be operated on. Um, I actually didn't have use of my normal um, functioning um, bowels for um, seven months. I was very lucky that um, it was reversible. So um, I actually got to have um, my normal um, toileting habits back again. Um, it's an interesting um, chapter to read on because you know it's nothing that I had any idea about. I never even heard that word before. Iliostomy, what's that? So um, that's that's pretty good for people to know. 
I talk about ovarian cancer awareness and the importance of spreading the word because the key to survival really is early diagnosis. So um, as a whole, listening to your instincts and being aware of the signs and symptoms, you know, um, it can help lead to that early diagnosis and giving you a better chance of survival. That's what we want. And that's why I want to share my story is to, um, you know, if there's any women out there that do get diagnosed, hopefully they do catch it early. I talk about skirmishes continue and uh, you know it's funny people will come up to me and say yay Charlene you're in the all clear now and high five and you know they, they don't quite understand that you know I still got a bit of um, treatment um, still got a little bit of um, a road to recovery um, recently being diagnosed with osteoporosis which is um, which can come from onset um, early menopause as well as um, chemotherapy treatments your bones do become a little bit weak and um, you know have to have to really work on that and um, also it sometimes feels like I'm back in limbo again you know um, you know the, trying to stay in remission um, sometimes is on the back of my mind and I do try and you know still be positive and get through that I have a whole chapter on pure kindness because some people really come together for me and I really appreciate everything that everyone did um, whilst I was going through cancer and what people still do now, you know. Um, if it wasn't for those, uh, you know, those people, you know, it would be a lot of a tougher journey, you know. People sent me cards in the mail, positive affirmations to remind me. Um, cards to say that you know they're rooting for me on the side and you know keep going strong and you know it's really good to know that people actually cared because when you're going through such a tough time you know you, you just feel so alone even though you're surrounded by um, lots of people and then there's the special thanks at the end who I um, actually list people that you know really helped through my journey and um, they, they do need, need that special thanks for me and yeah so that's pretty much a bit of a wrap up of uh, Battle Scars I hope that um, if you do get the book you enjoy the read and um, I'd love to know what you think about it you can uh, email me charlene.erickson at me.com or get onto my website www.battlescars.biz thanks for listening